Let's see if we can get to the archway. We are trying to get to the archway and we're off at Laclede's C-L-E-D-E -E landing. Colonial St. Louis. <clears throat> and that's a Crayoli House model, which again we <clears throat> saw in that trip 15 years ago. are people we just met on the airplane. This is Dor and Joan. They're going to be on the cruise also.
this is the hotel we're staying at the first night before we get on the ship. And it used to be a railroad station. Ship. This has been a really nice place to stay. or something in the altar they have on the on the rock. That's it. to Hannibal, Missouri. And it looks like we're going to have a very different trip than we thought because the Mississippi is rising so high we can't do the rest of the trip the way we thought. So we may be going up the Ohio River.
between flour. Let's see it. Big step.
house scrubs. You know, Earl had a partner. His name was Lester. Lester Flat. Flat and Scrubs. Lester played the guitar. trying to give us the entire shipboard experience. They're competing with Carnival and that they're giving us towels that are shaped like swans. Again, it's a really nice setup. Um, no water spillage where the last time I was on this boat you'd take the shower and, and it'd be water all over the place. So they've really improved things. You've, you've got a full-length mirror. And if your eyesight's bad, you've got one of these mirrors, which I love, which I have at the house. You can see all the water, how high the water is rising. So that's why they moved us to the Illinois River.
can go underneath it. Because, yeah, it's all the way up. These little cars can't go anyplace until we pass under the bridge. So the stacks have to be down, or we would never get under this bridge. All right, so because of the Mississippi River being too high now. Yeah. Now they have, they have switched it and we're going to the Illinois River. We're here in Grafton. Then it looks like the next place we're going to go is, did you think Havana, Ken? Havana. 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 And then we go from Havana to Peoria and then Peoria to Ottawa. Then they're going to bus us to Chicago. So this is a very different trip than we thought we were going to have, but it's still nice. Okay, we're at the new at the visitor center for Lincoln. And all it's kept up. Looking at the reenactment of the new Salem village. The, the footings and the Ritzel are our original. Hi, come on in. Welcome to the Henry Anstott home. Mr. Anstott was the village cooper. He made the barrels, he made the buckets, butter churns. He lived here with his wife and five of his eight children. <laughs> may seem small to you, but it is the largest single family home you'll see in the village. So if you lived here, you had it pretty good. Now the village itself is strictly commercial. It was set up to, to help the farmers in the area. So every house you go in will have a business of some kind. At its peak, the village itself was 125 people. In 1835, this village was the same size as Chicago in 1835. <laughs> so remember location, location, location. <laughs> Okay, so this is where they made the barrels and everything else. to the oxen and they both stopped and then he talked quite a long time to James. He told him many things, how the wheat was sowed, how it grew, how it was cut, and how it was made into flour. James had been living in the city and he did not know much about wheat, so he was much pleased with what Mr. Jones told him. James found he could learn
Well, we're going to be leaving Peoria to go on to Ottawa, Illinois, and then when we finish in Ottawa, we're going to be heading home. happened when the Pope embraced Bishop Sheen. On October 2nd, 1979,
Well, this is Peoria, Illinois.
as I grew up knowing them as Jews harps. A friend of ours who used to live on the Illinois River uh, told me years ago, you know, there are three different kinds of Jews harps. Um, Orthodox, conservative. <laughs> so um, I have three here, and uh, hopefully they're all in the right note. And we'll do. Skipping on the Mississippi it's, it's like the, the mouth bow, except again, instead of using your face, you actually use your tongue to emphasize the overtones given off that note. Okay, there you go. How's that for sign? Three. <laughs> taking donations for this right here on the corner on the right. This is the, we have entered on what I call the fourth life of the mansion. 
The first, obviously, was the time that the Reddicks lived here from 1858 until um, 1887. There were three Reddicks, William and Eliza, who built the home, and the daughter that they took in as a young girl named Elizabeth. Um, Mr. Reddick was a self-made man, your typical immigrant story, and um, he and Eliza, he um, trained as a glassmaker early in his life in Pennsylvania. That was where he met and married his wife Eliza. They were to be married for over 50 years. And um, they moved out here to Illinois in 1835. He heard the call to go west, young man, go west. And they bought 400 acres of property south of here at a dollar and a quarter an acre and set up farming. But three years later, he was called upon to become the sheriff of LaSalle County to get the gang of Irish hooligans who were building the Illinois-Michigan Canal under control, essentially. The canal is two blocks north of us, and it was built to provide a direct waterway link between Lake Michigan and the Illinois River. Um, he also went after that. He was elected to the Illinois State Senate for six years. And we think he had aspirations to perhaps be the governor of Illinois, which was his impetus to have this home designed and built beginning in 1855. Um, it was completed in 58 at a cost of $25,000. It has four floors and originally had 22 rooms. Um, the Reddicks lived here for about 30 years. Mr. Reddick was kind of one of early Ottawa's movers and shakers. And um, after all three Reddicks died, Mr. Reddick had directed in his will that this building was to be left to the city of Ottawa to be used as a reading room ever open to the public. In other words, a library. And so for nearly 90 years, from 1888 to 1975, this was our public library. I have vivid memories of coming here as a little girl um, the children's department was downstairs, and I also worked there my senior year in high school. And of course, upstairs was the reference department. And so if I had any uh, projects in high school in particular, you know, they would have been upstairs. This is all pre-computer era. Um, when the, the library left in 75, there had been debate about tearing the mansion down to provide space for the new library. But the association was formed in order to save the building because it is the only building on Washington Square today that witnessed the first debate between Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas. That was held on August 21st, 1858, right after the Red moved into the home here. It's hard to visualize in Washington Square um, 12, 000, 12 to 14,000 people gathered on that hot, hot, humid August day. And they said there, all the roads were dirt, and so all of the wagons and the carriages coming in and down, the special trains from Chicago, they said there was just a layer of dust over the whole river valley. Um, Mr. Reddick, as the leading Democrat of the area, was invited to sit on the speaker's platform with Stephen Douglas. That's why you will see a photograph of Stephen Douglas in the middle parlor as opposed to Abraham Lincoln. I always have to disappoint people in telling them that Mr. Lincoln would not have been in this home. He would have seen it, but he would not have been here. <laughs> um, like I said, the family lived here for about 30 years. Um, Mrs. Reddick passed away first in 83. Mr. Reddick two years later in 85, probably in the room that you people are sitting in. And then their daughter Elizabeth died in 88, 87. And it was 88 that the library came in here. They made, and I don't, I don't where some of you came in on my talk, but they made, um, the library made lots of structural changes. They had to really open up, took out lots of walls to make space, you know, for the library books, the magazines, et cetera. Um, the library left in the mid-1970s because of space limitations and weight on the floors was becoming an issue. And that's when the association was formed. Um, for 42 years, we took care of the building um, when it was owned by the city. But a year ago in August, we purchased the building outright from the city. And now it's our task to do a $700,000 exterior restoration and continue with the interior restoration. And again, we are all volunteers. It's a labor of love for us. Most of the people that you see here are on the board. And it's, uh, um, we also host events here. That's why these rooms haven't been totally restored. 
Um, these are, we also rent these rooms out. We had a, um, the Women in Nuclear group from the LaSalle County Nuclear Station had a big party here a couple of weeks ago and used these rooms. So anyway, do any of you have any questions? Feel free to take photographs and things like that. Um, you may, you know, go upstairs, you may, um, if you go, uh, if you're going to go across the hall, I'm going to ask that you retrace your steps to the back and then go across the hallway to the dining room and start there and then come through the parlors. And there are people stationed in each room and they'll just kind of keep a running commentary to tell you about um, the different rooms and things like that. So, okay. thank you. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> This was the director's office when it was a library, and she would have access. What I've been told. So you guys, you you know all about this. You have to get active and contact the school board members. You got to talk to the teachers in your area. You know, it's like they, they need we're, that wisdom. We're, uh, we're all. Yeah. They don't pay no, to I'm, old people, I'm, you have to make them listen. You have to make them listen. But they don't listen to old people. I know, but you have you have yes. that you have that experience and wisdom, and it needs to be transmitted. But but the problem is with the progressive people. They don't want to hear what you used to do. You no, know? they do. That, yes, they don't. They no, really no, don't. I'm a progressive person. Well, I'm a progressive person. Of course, was across the street on the speaker's platform sitting with Stephen Douglas. Uh, Mrs. Yeah, Reddick yes. entertained that day with a bar. I have one. Well, you were a friend of Mrs. Reddick in a very long Because August 21st, 1958, was one of the hottest days of the year. Everyone else had to stand for the three hour debate. But you could come and you could sit on the staircase or on the balconies, and if you needed to, you'd not come inside. If you were friends with all this. This is the only building that was here when the land that was debate. Mr. Reddick was on the committee to bring the courthouse across the street to town. It started out as the state supreme court. And then it's now the third appellate court. So what happened was they got the first floor built, and then the state of Illinois ran out of money. And that hasn't changed. <laughs> so, anyway, so the churches, every, all the other buildings around here, none of them were here when the debate took place. There is a large boulder. It's hard to see with all the trees leafed out, but when you go down the stairs and exit, you'll be able to see it. It was put in in 1908 to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the debate. The DAR found it four miles north of here on a farm. We're told it weighed 22 tons. When I was a little girl, my father told me that my grandfather would die here before I was born. And he had been one of the gentlemen that helped move the boulder. He was 22 at the time. So when I started volunteering here four years ago, when I found out how much it weighed and where they found it, I'm like, okay, I wish my dad was alive so I could ask him what happened. Now, um, I do have a twin sister. She lives in Springfield. Called her up, asked her. She had no clue what I was talking about. And then, interesting story, about 10 years ago, we went on a trip together. It's a very long trip in many, many ways. And I wanted to go through the New England states. She wanted to start in D.C. She whined at me, so I gave in. We went to D.C., we visited the museums, we went to the Library of Congress, and there was a display. It was near the time of the 150th anniversary, so it was a big display on all of the towns. They spelled out. They had an O-T-T-O-W-A. My sister looked at me and said, don't start trouble. I said, I said, you know I'm going to. So I did. I called. I left a message. She said, you will never hear from them. 
think we were in Rhode Island where my cell phone rang and a very nice lady calling from the Library of Congress called to tell me that they had spelled it that way on purpose. They took the spelling from a letter that Douglas wrote to Lincoln suggesting places to debate in and he had spelled it wrong. And it was their policy not to change if it was from an historic document. So I said, as long as you know where this spelled, the same as Ottawa, Canada. When school kids come through here for tours, I just tell them, you know what, if you're a bad speller, that's okay if you tell your teachers that Mr. Douglas was a bad speller, too. So, have you guys seen the clock yet? Were you part of the crowd that listened to? Oh, uh, no. You did not. At then least let, I then didn't let's go. Um, astronomical regulator clock. It has three dials for the seconds, minutes, and hours. And when I was young, this clock actually stood on that wall right there. Um, now we have it here. We have uh, one of our board members, volunteer board members, that comes in every Friday. And he winds it and he keeps it going. It usually runs about eight days. If it's very, very humid in August, sometimes it doesn't run. But Roger knows what he's doing. Uh, one interesting thing is that is all mercury that is used as the weight. So we have to be very careful. So all of us women are like, let the guy do it. You know? And can take care of it. Now we have a clock guy. And he said, this clock is very interesting because instead of going tick-tock, it goes tock tick <laughs> So, and if you listen very carefully, you can hear that. So, anyway, so this piece is original to the home. We actually, I think we have it in charge for replacement value. We never find a replacement for about $220,000. Mm -hmm. This is our most expensive piece. Also, right? It's how many? That you came through. So we have it decorated as the 1870s, which would have been when the family was living here for a formal dinner. And if you haven't already noticed, notice our beautiful, elaborate plaster ceilings, some of the most beautiful ceilings since uh, pre-Civil War uh, for the state of Illinois. Uh, very beautiful ceilings were well known for that factor. Uh, we do have a couple of original Reddick pieces in here. The pedestal that you see there, not the statuary, but the pedestal is original. And this silver urn over here is an original Reddick piece also. It has their initials on it, W-E-R for William and Eliza Reddick. It's Roman and Greek and Egyptian. And this is the little bowl that catch the drips. So you put hot water in there, fill up your cup with hot water, take it to the table and put your tea in there to make hot tea. And this interesting piece here is actually a butter dish. The butter was made in a ball about the size of a baseball and it was put in here and this was on the table to keep the butter from leaking all over but yet keep it at room temperature for your toast or your bread. A cruet set was always used in these old homes like this and this beautiful sideboard and that piece over there, the dining room set, are all from the 1870s, the beautiful marble top table and the chairs. Painted from a and, library. Uh, and he was a big supporter of Douglas, who you see on the other wall, um, during the first Lincoln-Douglas debate, which was held across the street in the square. We're told that Reddick sat on the platform. There was a Supreme with Mr. Douglas. This fireplace was here, I remember it when I was a child, when it was the library. Um, the windows are very unusual. There is, you can see it all the way out of the floor. This door and was I put in by the library. They couldn't afford to pay for it. Clear. 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 They couldn't find it. I, I Take it out. <laughs> but, uh, and our projects that's on our list of plans, as well as the work to be done on the, on the exterior balconies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
let you go out. <laughs> Are you guys together? I am. This is Washington Square where Lincoln and Douglas had the great debate. And then the Ruddock Mansion. You can't really see it through the trees, but it's there. So this is the original? This is the original. Everything in here is original. And, uh, well, the glass counter is moved. <laughs> <laughs> there were four toll houses. Yeah, there were four of these built. Okay. On the and this is the last of them. Okay. Between Chicago and LaSalle, behind us by about 20 miles. And they would stop here and pay their tolls. They'd stop their barge right out here, like this one. And this was manned by a toll collector. And he had the fees, he had a book of fees, and depending on what you were carrying on your barge is what you paid. Just like on the tollway, you know, <laughs> if you're carrying corn, you got at one rate. If you're carrying pigs, another rate. If you're carrying people, another rate. And that's in part how they paid for the i and canal maintenance and stuff. That, and uh, in the wintertime they'd sell ice, they'd freeze up, they'd sell ice. And earlier they would sell lots. The uh, canal commissioners owned great huge chunks of property, which they would divide up into city lots and then sell those off. And those are the four ways that the I&M Canal made its money. See, originally, back in 18 War of 1812, when the Americans uh, won that war. Part of this deal with the Indians was we got 96, we got the land 96 miles from Chicago River all the way down to Yeah. Where are you guys from? To us from Australia. Australia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you sure from down that neck of the woods, or did we run into a lot of you folks down yes. on your boat? Yes, there's quite a few on the boat. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask them if there was a... There's nearly a mutiny. Yeah. Know, we can tell them you're there. <laughs> be, be sure to sign our best book for us. Yeah. 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 Be sure to sign our best book for us, please. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, this, this uh, going back to the canal here, it's uh, Chicago to LaSalle is a difference of 141 feet. So they built 15 of these locks, and they were dropped down about 9 feet, about feet each level. that you have earned this week by being on a cruise that didn't exactly go where you thought it did. <laughs> I have always told y'all, tell everybody, that um, your itinerary is only a suggestion. <laughs> I don't know, we'd like to go Red Wing, but we'll go someplace else if we have to. That's why there are so many songs that have the word Paducah in them.
we've been to Paducah a lot of times when they weren't on the schedule. You know, for four, four, I think four, three or four years in a row, we, in, we went in 2012, we went to St. Louis for the 4th of July, and it was great. Just the, the planes were flying, you know, they, have the, they had an air show right over the river where the boat was. They had the sparkler things, I guess they call them fireworks, right over where the boat was. And they had, it was just this really cool 4th of July weekend. Then next year, we, we had it scheduled to go to St. Louis for the 4th of July, and the river stopped us, and we had to go to where? Paducah. And the next year, we were going to go to St. Louis for the 4th of July, and where do we go? Paducah. And the next year, I'm telling you, and uh, so it's just, it's, it's just, it's great that Paducah is there. Thank God for Paducah. I'm going to write a song called, Thank God for Paducah. In the meantime, thank God for wherever we're going, you know, tomorrow, Ottawa. <laughs> So this is a, you know, this is sung the tune of Red Wing, which hardly anybody knows. Um, what? <laughs> no, you, want, you guys know it, right? Yeah. Okay, well, of course you know it. Uh, I'm gonna go a little slow because I noticed when we did it before that, that we were tripping over ourselves trying to get all the words. In. But they're, 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 they fit pretty well with the original, but you know. <laughs> Around about nine today, we heard the captain say, Our lovely trip on the mighty Mississippi would deviate and turn the other way. There's too much H2O, the bridges are too low. We'll turn around and mark Twain's town to find some place to go. Oh, oh, hold the O right there. Hold the O. Oh, can't go to Green Red Wing. The water's rising. It ain't surprising. For our vacation, our vacation. <laughs> so where are we gonna go? The captain let us know. We'll go Grafton Way and spend half a day, then turn our steamboat north to Chicago. We hope it's gonna work. We're courting Captain Kirk. We'll boldly go where we've never gone. Your fun will never shirk. Oh, boat can't go to Green Bay. The water's rising. It ain't surprising. So find a brand new destination for our vacation on the AQ. So down the river we float inside our lovely boat. The music is grand. We all clap our hands, each enjoying each and every single note. <gasps> Along our merry way, the river wants to play. It pushes a smidge. We bounce off a bridge. The hits keep coming, eh? The water's rising, it ain't surprising. So find a brand new destination for our vacation on the AU. Next morning in Grafton, we left the Coast Guard on. They took a long look, then wrote in their book, this boat may travel hither and yon. We brought aboard a team to clear the battered beam. The cap said indeed we're clear to proceed and throttle up the steam. Oh, boat can go to Great Red Wing. The water's rising, it ain't surprising. So find a brand new destination for our vacation on the AQ. We're steamboating today. Up, up, and away. Some raindrops appeared, the heat disappeared. How sweet it is to while the time away. Watch the eagle soar along the shore. We eat barbecue, enjoying the view. Play cards, read books, and snore, very snore. Oh, boat can go the The water's rising, it ain't surprising. So find the brand new destination for our vacation on the AQ. Now while we're enjoying our you know, tragedy, well really you're enjoying a tragedy. That's what's it. It's like reading Death of a Salesman. You know, you're, it's, you're, it's an enjoyable tragedy. Yeah, maybe not. Anyway, while we're enjoying our, our you know our weird cruise, the Duchess is is is, is really not enjoying anything. I mean, just 
heard a while ago. The Duchess caught the flow. It isn't a fluke. She got to debut, but won't be going nowhere else no more. The river rose too fast and won't allow her past. She's holding the town, can't go up or down. Just how long will this last? Oh, the boat can't go Well, the rain is pouring down in old Havana town, but lucky for us, the boat's got a bus, so we don't have to worry about ground. Back on the AQ, we got lots to do. Some like a puzzle of beverage to guzzle, games, music, movies, too. Oh, the volcano, the gray red wing, the water's rising, it ain't surprising. So find the variety destination on our vacation on the AQ. Well, hop and drop we go, wandering to and fro. No stoplights to see is Nirvana to me. It's sure small town America, you know. Tonight we'll venture forth, happily steering north to Euphoria in Peoria. Let's hope it doesn't pour. <laughs> Peoria. I think that's a great stop. Yes. Yeah. I just really enjoyed the happy that I've never seen it before. You know, this is all this stuff up here is a first for me as well as y'all and some of y'all anyway. And uh, I never, I never seen Peoria. I never seen Havana. I've never seen Ottawa. If you play it, if you play it, Gotta have Peoria delights. So many lovely sights. The rain stayed away, we had a nice day enjoying till we had to leave tonight. Tomorrow we'll explore another town du jour. Our last hurrah is an old Ottawa who couldn't ask for more. The water's rising, it ain't surprising. So find a brand new destination for our vacation on the AU. Go to pretty red wing, it's not disturbing, nor is it perturbing. Cause we learned an interesting lesson upon the 82, the post of show.